right, Donald Trump is vowing a reciprocal tax, a reciprocal tax on goods imported from other countries. You remember he's made this threat uh, in the past, particularly on the campaign trail when he was campaigning to be president. But he also made uh, this, this, these comments as well after revealing the budget. A lot of people are saying that this could cost the taxpayers another seven billion. Uh, all right, so Peter Chan, managing partner of Silver Bear Capital, joins us live now. So here's my question about this. We've heard Donald Trump talk about this idea of some kind of reciprocal trade tax in the past. Is this an empty threat, do you think, or do you think we'll actually end up seeing some form of this at some point in the future? Well, actually, um, the, from a lot of people from China had been um, waiting for this to happen and whether this would happen in the right manner we don't know because up to today um, the president's office has not reviewed the structure of the tax um, that the, he is trying to propose so we have no way to understand or even to um, articulate what he is aiming for because what he said in his statement was actually he's going to leave out this tax even with his u.s allies mm -hmm. so um are you, do you have any fears of any kind of trade war if this ends up happening? Well, actually, no, because um, uh, at, at the start, I mean, the, remember the sphere of WTO, which actually was led by the U.S. Um, superpower in the beginning, whereby everybody who thinks that this no trade war is going to be the best status. Uh, for the whole world and since then I mean the US has been leading this WTO in such a direction that whereby everybody was really happy about it now until now if US decided that this is no longer going to be the spirits I think um, this is going to break down the whole um, history of WTO, which had, which everybody had put a lot of effort together. Yeah, what's interesting though is that China is of course a US ally and the US really, I mean now more than ever, the US needs China because of what is happening with North Korea. They, they sort of see China as a partner in terms of getting North Korea, North Korea some might say it's a pipe dream, but somehow to curb their nuclear program. Um, if this sort of reciprocal trade tax, trade tariff ends up happening, what would happen to U.S.-China relations? Well, first of all, China is going to probably be um, unwillingly to accept this. But I think heartily um, they see a follow-up problem with the U.S. because if there is a heavy tariff on Chinese product going into U.S., this leads to a lower return for most U.S. companies on their profitability um, and therefore paying less tax. So it goes round and round in circle. And China is going to probably say, hey, how long can you last? Um, let's talk a little bit uh, about U.S. markets right now because we are seeing a lot of volatility. Guys, if we could just pull up what's happening in the markets today on the screen so I can see. Last time I checked, oh, it's still roughly around uh, down 80 points or so. What do you make of that, especially given the context of the rally we saw both on Monday and on Friday? I believe we had the largest two-day point gain in about two years since 2016. And now that market rally seems to have snapped. Is volatility basically the new normal at this point? Well, I think the uh, the volatility is, is going to continue a little bit. But I think as is again, uh, everybody was setting too high of a target in the beginning with most of the uh, company stocks. Um, and what we view from Hong Kong and China is that this is not a adjustment yet. Um, we we think it's going to settle down very quickly, probably within the next 10 days. And uh, I think it's going to go back to where it was, but not exactly as high. And uh, I don't think there is any um, panic um, uh, psychological problems over in the, in the Asia side yet. Okay. Like this. Let's talk about Macau and the sort of gambling casino world, because we know that American companies are investing heavily in Macau. How much money from the U.S. is pouring into Macau right now in terms of building casinos? And how is China responding to that sort of economic threat? Well, the interesting thing is um, NVM um, hotel, new hotel, has been delayed probably more than four times in the past. Um, uh, when when the project was going to go ahead, it, it, it received certain delay from the Macau government with regards to the licensing. 
Now, the interesting thing is the whole hotel cost probably 3.4 billion to build, and the license for MGM is going to end in 2020. Um, there is no official um, talk about uh, renewing uh, the license for MGM, mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of the guys in Macau, the other are uh, the other five operators in Macau's license is going to be due by 2022, I believe. So. Um, this this um, this investment uh, in for MGM had led to obviously a, a very quick growth in the economy in Macau, which benefits China directly. Mm -hmm. But whether China really wanted to want Macau to be really dependent on, on on gambling in the future is a questionable concern. Now, 55 percent or more of um, investments in Macau right now are from U.S. I don't have the numbers off the head right now. How much money been? We went through to Macau, but uh, it's not a small number. You're talking about monthly revenue right now on on Macau businesses to 26.6 billion mm. on a monthly revenue. All right, so 55 percent, as you're saying, comes from the United States in terms yeah, of investment yeah. in Macau. You believe you don't have the numbers in front of you, but you believe. All right, uh, Peter Chun, bye for us. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Okay, so one of South Korea's most powerful bosses. Um, let's talk about this now because there has been a massive sort of corruption scandal that's been brewing in South Korea for quite some time. And Choi Soon Sil has actually been given 20 years for bribe bribery. It was a scandal that was so bad that it actually helped bring down uh, President Park Geun Hye's government. And it's the latest example of businesses and politics, politicians rather, cozying up. Here's our Paula Newton with more. Well, there isn't much that can knock the Olympics in North Korea out of the headlines here in South Korea, but for a few hours it happened today as a South Korean court issued a sentence of 20 years for uh, the confidant of former President Park Geun Hye. Choi Soon Sul is now ordered to pay $16.5 million and will now remain in custody for at least 20 years. What is interesting here is the revelations, the web of prosecutions that South Korea is seeing now to try and get some transparency transparency to apparently the bribery and the fraud schemes that went on during the former president's reign. What's interesting here too is that the 20 years, many people are looking to that as an indication as to whether or not Park Geun Hye, her verdict, she's in custody, uh, the former president, the verdict is expected later this year, whether or not she will also get a very harsh sentence. Now also sentenced today is the head of another South Korean conglomerate, Latte, you know, the head of uh, department stores, hotels, many other businesses. He he is now in prison for at least two and a half years, in order to pay six and a half million dollars. Um, and he had told CNN last year that he did not believe he would ever be in prison because he said he had done nothing wrong. He is appealing. But clear here that in South Korea, they are looking for reform and they're wondering through all these prosecutions and what has come to light if they can expect some real reform in both their economy and their politics. Paul Newton, CNN, Seoul. All right, and as our Paula Newton mentioned there, former President Park Geun Hye is on trial now. She is pleading not guilty and denies all allegations against her. All right, still to come here on the Quest Express, a moment of truth for South Africa. Can Jacob Zuma survive calls from his own party to resign? He has been recalled as of today. Will he end up stepping down? That is the question.